let me open this video by telling you a famous story about Gauss. This story shows that Gauss was shining with mathematical talent from a very early age. According to the story, one day, a teacher that was teaching Gauss's class wanted to keep the children busy, and he gave them an assignment to add all the numbers from 1 up to 100. In less than a minute, the 70 years old Gauss declared that he solved the problem. In fact, Gauss has discovered a method to derive the formula for the arithmetic sequence. Let us now follow the footsteps of a genius kid and reproduce his way of thinking. If we were to add all the numbers one after another, the task would be time consuming. Gauss noticed that if we add the first number and the last one, the sum is 101. Similarly, if we add the second number and the second last number, the sum will also be 101. If we continue this way of selecting the pairs of numbers that we add, of taking a step forward from the first and a step backwards from the last, and add the corresponding pair, we will see that the sum will still be 101. The reason for this is that taking a step forward makes the first number in the pair increase by 1, and when we take a step backwards, the second number in the pair decreases by 1. And as a result, the sum of the next pair is the same as the sum of the previous pair. There are 50 such pairs, and therefore the sum equals 50 times 101, which is 5050. This method can be generalized for any natural number n, and we can prove by induction the following formula. Adding 1 to n and multiplying by the number of pairs, which is half n, equals the sum of all the numbers from 1 to n. Note that n times n plus 1 will always be divisible by 2, as either n or n plus 1 must be even. Let us now see a geometric way that illustrates the thought process. I wouldn't be surprised if that visual way is actually the way that Jan Gauss used to solve the problem. Let us consider this staircase that goes up one step at a time. The number beneath each column represents the number of squares in that column, as well as the number of the column. Geometrically, we can think of the sum as the number of squares in the staircase. For the purpose of illustration, we have only five stairs. However, it is intuitively clear that this method can be naturally generalized to an arbitrary number. Let us imagine rotating this staircase and placing a copy of it on top. We obtain this rectangle. The number of squares in the rectangle is therefore twice the sum as it is made of two identical copies of the same staircase. The sides of the rectangle are therefore n plus 1 and n. The number of squares in the rectangle is n times n plus 1, and we derive the same formula once again. But is there a geometric way to see the formula for the sum of squares of all the numbers from 1 up to n? It turns out that such a way exists. Let us consider this shape of height n, each layer of which has n squared cubes. In an attempt to reproduce this geometrical proof, we will need to assemble a beautiful three-dimensional puzzle that consists of six identical pieces, as we aim to obtain a rectangular cuboid. Let us first see a 360-degree view of the shape and then the assembly of the puzzle. We have managed to construct this rectangular cuboid out of six identical pieces. The number of cubes in each represents the sum of the squares. Therefore, the number of cubes in the rectangular cuboid is six times the sum of the squares. If we observe the sides of the cuboid, one of the sides is of length n, 
as it is equal to the side of the base of the pyramids that we used to construct it. Similarly to the staircase problem, another side is of length n plus 1. Finally, if we observe the face of the cuboid that is facing us, we notice the n by n blue square, one red cube, and then all the sequence of colors which gives another n, which means that the length of the side is 2n plus 1. Therefore, the sum equals n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6.